static Linked up with a couple exes just to make sure I'm protected Cause losing me is like wearing heavy chains as your necklace And I'm infinitely better, it's hard for them to accept it Than any nigga they had or any nigga that's next And come on, they fuck around and do some crazy shit Like tryna lock me down forever on some baby shit So I just tell them I'll be back on some lazy shit They start asking questions, juking on some shady shit Come on, this the problem with being the same Try to settle down early, won't have me in no chain Sitting court side, but I'm trying to be in the game There's something deep inside of me that's just not easily tamed Come on, and I be trying to calm it down But something by my spirit is attracted to the crown Don't want no wedding ring, so I be dumbfound To CC every girl that I'd CC round town But if I did, I'd tell them that I love them Don't want no situation, I just really want to fuck them And after I come through, I hit it crazy, then I tuck them I just might leave a hoodie or a shirt, cause that's my custom I'm telling you Pro at this shit. My stroke back and forth like we be rowing this shit. I fill her head with lies, but she be knowing this shit. So when it's time for our goodbyes, she start hoeing this shit. Come on. I'm all glowing this shit. Dice in my hand now, so I'll be rolling this I'm shit. I'm privileged drinkers, baby. Like river, they be flowing this shit. And her ass real fast, so I'll be holding her shit. Come on. Yo, what's up? We back with another one. It's an Unprivileged Drinker Special Edition with me and my wife, Neek. Um, as you can see, it's a recent Neek Unprivileged Conversations. This is going to be Communications Part 2. Um, we're excited to bring this to you. It's, it takes a lot of work to get here, um, so be patient with us. I know the people have been asking for it, but um, it's difficult, man. You got kids. You know, you got lives to live. There's a lot of things you got going on. Uh, we had a lot of family events, things like that. But, um, yeah, like I said, we back with another one. That's an unprivileged conversation, and we wanted to kind of follow up on the last one that we gave you a few weeks back. Um, but, yeah, with no further ado, I want to bring my wife in, and um, you can hear from her. What's up, babe? Hey, y'all. <laughs> uh, it's going to be your thing now. Hey, y'all. No, it's not. <laughs> um, yeah, it's unique. Everybody call me Neek, so. Yeah. That's what everybody can call me, Neek. My yeah. husband calls me B, but that's for him. Right, right. That's Yeah, right. That's what we call each other and our son <laughs> when he uh, wants to get his point across. Right. Um, but, yeah, like I said, we want to kind of pick up where we left off. Um, if we can do that, because uh, there's been a lot of conversation, a lot of things that's happened in the past couple of weeks. Um, before we do that, um, you know, we want to do a quick, um, you know, recap, I guess you could say. Uh, your birthday was just Monday. That was a beautiful thing. We had a good time. You know, we did. if you know my wife, she likes to eat a lot. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, she wants to eat. So, uh, I, I don't remember the name of the first place we went to, um, for brunch, for brunch, right? I don't know the name of it though. Booker's Booker's University okay. City, Southwest area. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Food was good. Was good. Food was good. Um, I think I had, well, I had the chicken slice, but you ate one of them. So I only had one. There's only two in an order. Right. But you ate the other. It was good. Um, and I had Great. the Thai chili wings. I mm -hmm. think they were, they were really good. Fried right. right, you know, nothing off with them. Um, and we had a mimosa flight mm -hmm. which came with um a pomegranate juice. Pom yes. Pomegranate mango. juice, mango, pineapple. Pineapple and something else that it's wasn't orange. orange, but right. She said it was orange, but she said it didn't taste like orange. At all it didn't. Yeah, it had a weird taste to it. So we didn't really use it, but the other ones we did finish. It was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um after that, we left there. Um, like I said, we had a great time there. We'd definitely go back because um, I know they have a wine garden next yeah. to it, right? Mm -hmm. It's open uh, on specific times. So we got to go back to, to get into that. Um, but then after that, I don't know if you wanted to bring that up or not, what we went to afterwards. Yeah. Could, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't know. Um, but um, unfortunately, uh, my wife's uh, father passed away on her birthday 31 years ago. Um, we had never visited his gravesite. Um, we've talked about, you know, him before, obviously, but never visited the gravesite. So, we, you know, we kind of went on a little journey. We at least knew where he was buried at, which, thank God, would, you know, if you didn't know he was buried at, I'd be like, I'm sure a needle in the haystack. But like I said, due to the information that we already had, we at least knew where to go to, which was Ivy Hill Cemetery up in uh, Mount Airy. Um, this was before they were closing, so we were able to get some information. Um as to where his whereabouts were. Um, I don't know if you want to go further. Well, tap on it just a little yeah. bit. Um, 
Yeah, so like my husband said, my dad was killed on my fourth birthday. Um, a long time ago, I was a little girl, but I remember everything about that day. Um, and my family, like my grandma, my mom, I remember being a kid, being able to explain that day to them, and they were all in shock. Like, how you remember that day? Um, but I remember a lot of details about that day, even from what my grandma was wearing or what friends of the family was wearing. Um, so over the years, it's just always something that I thought about. I could never really not think about it on my birthday. So I like to do things on my birthday that's going to keep me happy, keep me in a good mood, um, just so I don't get too much of my thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, so this birthday, I got a little emotional about it, talking about it, thinking about it, and I'm like, you know what? I never went to visit his grave site. So um, my husband hearing me talking about it and, you know, looking at me, he like, we going, let's go. And he took me, because I wasn't going to ask, but... He took me up there, and it was good. We learned something new. Um, that was a long time ago. When my dad passed away, he was actually only 21. And the people at the cemetery had a hard time finding him. But once I let them know that he was cremated, um, they found him, and they let us know that he was in what they call a non-recoverable area. Non-recoverable area. Um, and basically... What my family must have did back then was say, you know, we want them cremated, and they put them in an area where there are other hundreds of other people, and their ashes are are in a vault, basically. Um, so the guy showed me exactly which vault, like which spot my dad would have been in, and if anybody in the family ever wanted to get his ashes, we can't because that's what the non-recoverable area is for. It's permanent. Um, so it gave me, like, you know, a little bit of an eerie feeling, but yes, it was cool. I'm glad that we went. It was um, much needed, and I felt good afterwards. So yeah, experience overall. Yes, and um, I, have, I actually have two family members that are in there as well. Um, but that's not what we went there for. You know what I mean? I asked about them just to see if they can kind of point me in a direction so when I go up next time um, that I can go visit them as well since we're going to be going there probably more often now that we know exactly where he is. Mm -hmm. um, but just to kind of touch on this a little bit, like she said, um, he died very young. Um, he was 21, right? Mm -hmm. So, And that was 31 years ago. So to know that you've already surpassed his life expect mm -hmm. I mean, his lifespan already is crazy. Um and it's sad and it's unfortunate because the city that we come from, Philly, um, there's a lot of like just senseless violence going on for no reason at all. Like, you know, what I mean, people are losing their lives every single day over just the just the senseless stuff. Like, you know, what I mean, they the ops, this, the ops, that and it's like, man, like when we used to go out and I'm just talking about this last week. Uh, with somebody after the cookout like when we used to go out we was just worried about like talking to girls and just having mm -hmm. fun and like being with your homies or whatever and their whole objective is they worried about the ops and i'm like i don't know if i could have survived and I'm, I'm sure i would have just had to adapt mm -hmm. honestly but um it's just unfortunate that they can't enjoy the fun that we probably used to have, even just going out, like things happen obviously when we went out, but it wasn't the main objective. Right. It wasn't like going out to look for somebody. So, yeah. or, or to watch over your own shoulder. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that goes into the communication because again, this is about communication. Yeah. And the one thing that we know that that's true is some of this stuff is being communicated through music so they're following behind some of what, who they consider to be their um, idols or people that they look up to. And there's a problem. There's a, you know, there's a disconnect there that, you know, that, and I understand it. Like, I'm not going to make it seem like I didn't come up with people that it was like, we didn't have that level of rap, but I don't think we were as like, like into it as they were, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think we believed everything that they said. You know what I mean? I think there was a level of like, this is still an art form. You know what I mean? Like, I think, at least for the people that I knew, like, you know what I mean? Like, and that's why I said, not to say that we didn't get into anything, but there were things that we kind of knew, like, 
if you was doing that, you wouldn't be out here. You know what I mean? Like, so, um, it's unfortunate, um, that he had to lose his life because he didn't, you know, get to see his grandkids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're his only daughter. He didn't get to see you married either time. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of things that go into that, that, um, is hurtful. And I know that, you know, you talking about it was a thing was, was big for you because, you know, most times we are trying to distract ourselves on the day. You know what I mean? We we going somewhere, we doing this, we doing that, you know what I mean? Whereas though this day, I think we kind of was able to sit in it for a moment and really, you know, feel that that absence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, one of our sons is named that he has his middle name. Um, well, our son has his first name as his middle name, I should right. say. But um it is it's just important for me. Uh, when it comes to like legacy, family, things like that. So I'm very big on that. And that's why I, I wanted to name uh, my son after her father. But let's get into the stuff, right? Yeah. Um, uh, as to why we're here. Um, you know, if this is your first time subscribe, uh, looking at us, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like, comment, you know, let us know what you're thinking. Um, but before we do, you know, we got to take a little sip of this, you know, it's called shot o'clock. So if you're out there, you can always, you know, get you a shot glass, you know, whatever it is you do. Mm -hmm. But we're going to sip this because we got them in like little champagne flutes. But it is some uh, Turkey Hill uh, pomegranate lemonade mixed with some, uh, what was that? Which one is that? The raspberry the shiny. Yes. Yeah, it's so, my favorite one. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. <laughs> oh, okay. You don't like it? I like it. I don't love it. It's too though. sweet. Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah, I yeah it is. It, a little but I, I like it still. But I think so the lemon, the pomegranate lemonade is already sweet in itself. Mm -hmm. And then mixing it with that probably just adds on. I'm trying to open this little cocktail carrier to throw them in there. Open it. But it, it won't open. And they probably saw me struggling. I was like, <laughs> I want to like knock all this stuff over. But um, I, yeah, it, it, I, I feel what you're saying. Like, and I'm letting it like settle. Yeah. It's like giving me like that real tangy taste on the back of my tongue. Like, Yeah, it probably it, it's probably definitely better with the orange juice. I just was trying sure. to be different. For sure. Um, I'm mean, I can try to do this probably some more, but um, so yeah, we wanted to get into communication uh, a little bit more. Um, so what was the topics that you wanted to bring up as far as? Well, actually, I know one of them. I can start. You know, these are the notes, people. <laughs> uh, pay attention, um, but to be intentional. With our communication, right? Right. Um, how would you break that down for our audience and for people older than us? Because I know there's different levels of communication styles. Like older people communicate a different way. People our generation, I think, communicate a different way. And then the ones that are younger than us communicate a little differently. And I think if I would categorize them, I think we are like on the cusp of that tech social media level mm -hmm. of communication where I think there's people our age that prefer probably just that or they'll just rather be on the phone, like physically talking to you. Mm -hmm. Whereas though I think the older generation, and this is just from a stand back, obviously I, I can't speak like fully from it, but I think that they prefer to just be on a regular telephone at home, like their home phones, not their cell phones. And just like kind of have, cause I don't, we don't even have a household. I don't think we ever have had one since we've been together. So um, I'm just saying, like, I think that that's the way they like to communicate. I even know that, like, um, somebody has sent us a postcard once. I'm like, I, we haven't done that in some time. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's like old school shit. But um, to be intentional, um, how would you want to communicate that to those, like, people? Um, so I feel like intentionality is a big important part of communication um intentionality to me is important when you want to remain on the same page as somebody like a lot of times when you send a text when <clears throat> you choose not to call or be in somebody's face to communicate you know i feel like it's important to make sure that you do everything you can everything in your power to communicate in a way that they understand exactly what you mean. Um, and by being on the same page, I can just go straight to an example. Like, 
in a marriage or in a relationship, you know, you in the same house and let's just say you know that something is going on later and you're not coming home at a certain time or the time that you are normally expected to be home and your husband or your wife is cooking dinner or, you know, you just got a routine and you kind of going to go outside the lines a little bit on that routine. It's important to be intentional about communicating, you know, how that routine is going to be interrupted a little bit. Um, little things like that, it goes a long way to make sure that you're on the same page. Like I know I'm a texter. Like I text, I like to talk on the phone and when I really got something to say or when somebody really has something to say, but if you gonna go the route of texting or sending somebody a message about whatever, um, I know I'm a big person on like emojis and punctuation. I, I feel like when you use those things, it might not make text the best form of communication just by using those things, but I think that it it can be a little bit more clear. Like I make sure when I'm laughing or when I'm smiling or when I'm, you know, saying something loving that I use hearts or I use smiley faces or, you know, if I'm upset or I'm sad, I use sad faces or, you know, I laugh when I'm trying to, um, you know, make light of certain things and make sure that they don't come across too serious. Um, so I think that a lot of people just talk the first thing that comes to their mind or they feel like I'm going to say what I got to say, but being intentional about making sure somebody is on the same page or doing everything in your power to make sure they're on the same page or make sure that making sure that um, they understand exactly what it is that you're you you are saying or exactly what it is that you mean is important. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I agree. Obviously, um, I learned a lot from you when it comes to communication. Um, as I stated in the previous episode. Um, I wasn't the best communicator. Um, I didn't care to be better at it. I wanted to just kind of like do whatever I wanted um, in any in every relationship, no matter whether it was uh, romantically or um, just regular friends or whatever, you know, platonic friends. I just didn't feel like I needed to communicate for you to understand me. If you didn't understand me, I kind of like left it to your interpretation, whether you did or didn't. Mm -hmm. So, um I say that to say, like I said, I learn a lot from you when it comes to communication styles and the way that um, I like to get my point across. Um, I, I come from a family of like tough love. Um, and I know I don't want to get too back too far back into family stuff, but I do want to touch on this where our communication style is more nonverbal a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? It's almost like you kind of want somebody to understand you without you having to say what it is you, you, you feel in. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't, you know, not everybody does that. Not everybody knows that. And I know that part of that, your reasoning for being that is because your mom was so vital and making sure that y'all spoke up for yourselves. So I know it took a lot of unlearning of what, I'm accustomed to because I wasn't really it wasn't like I was taught this like this is how you're supposed to do it It was just more of like oh this is how we kind of do mm -hmm. um whereas though yours was more intentional you know your mom kind of sat y'all down you and your sisters and kind of like made you feel comfortable in that atmosphere to speak up and speak like where I'm gonna just say for me I don't want to speak for all my siblings there's way too many of them <laughs> <laughs> um but I'm gonna just speak for me where I think I had to find my voice and once I did um, I just like didn't know how to shut up essentially. So if I got in trouble, I always was my own lawyer for myself. Like, well, it's because of this or it's because of that. But um, the real point of that is because I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it up is because your mom, you know, kudos to her for being so intentional with allowing y'all to speak up and not making y'all feel like, you know, you know, you're just kids. You know what I mean? You don't really have a say in the matter. And that's what a lot of our culture, I don't, I'm going to speak for everyone else, but I know in our culture, you know, you kind of just got the look like you, you better sit, fuck, <laughs> you sit your ass down. So, um, and we all still turned out fine. You know what I mean? Shout out to my parents. <laughs> I'm right. not trying to knock y'all. I love you, mom. Love you, dad. <laughs> um, they just actually just celebrated their what 38th anniversary. I think it was. If this is I'm trying to be Thursday. Yeah, I think it's 38th okay. anniversary on August 5th. My dad's birthday was fourth. Um, so it's a lot of August birthdays. Um, who was it? My mom's birthday was just on Wednesday. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot. You know what I mean? Like uh, August is a busy month. It wasn't always, right. but it, it, it has definitely become that. Um, so happy birthday to all the people um, who um, have August birthdays. Um, you know, shout out Leos. to y'all. The, the Leos, right? Yeah, the Leos. Even though the Virgos time is coming soon. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah, so <laughs> toast to y'all. Shout out to y'all. Shout a clock or whatever you want to do. A dirty birthday. Right. <laughs> Hey, shout out to Dirt. Um, who else? I feel like I'm missing somebody. Fatima's is coming up. Right. Um, Lawrence is coming Lawrence up. Lawrence is coming up. My sister. Ebony's is coming Well, that's Virgo season. But yeah, it's Virgo season. Yeah. Um, who else? Uh, Champagne Ave. Mm-hmm. Who else am I missing? Uh, the Twins. Coming up. Who? Jasmine. Your friend Jasmine. Yeah, shout out to you. Um, August a lot. Yeah, August is a lot of birthdays. Uh, the Twins, Omar and Amaya. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I'm missing somebody. Uh, man, Nyla. Nyla, that's who I, I knew I'm missing somebody. Yeah, yes, because that, that's who I was thinking of before we said somebody. But yeah, that's what we mean. You got to be intentional, man. Like, um, and one thing that I wanted to bring up, um, in regards to that being intentional, is the way we deal with one another, right? Um, I can recall a time back when my family went through a real bad tragedy and certain people um, kind of took a back seat because they didn't know how to approach the situation, right? Mm-hmm. So I remember it kind of blew up later on once we kind of got out of the little funk or whatever, and there was conversation like, well, why weren't you there for me? Like, why weren't, like, where was you at when all this was happening? And it was kind of more like, well, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to, like, approach it. And I think a lot of times we all don't know that. You know what I mean? Like we all deal with things very differently. And I think at times we have to come together and tell one another, like, like this is the level of support that I need. Like, I need you to call me. I need you to send a text every once in a while. Or I, I need your presence. Mm-hmm. These are things that, you know, it's not universal. You're like, you know what I mean? Some people really do need to be left alone when they feel in a way and they're down. They kind of like want to shut everything out and kind of close it off everything. And I think I might like, fall in that line where I'll kind of like either want to be around like maybe one or two people, Mm -hmm. but not a mass amount of people because, and I know that it's not, you know, purposeful, but like when people ask you like, are you okay? Like when you know, you're kind of dealing with something, it's like, Mm -hmm. like I'd rather not even answer. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of how I treat it sometimes. And I don't want to come off as rude, but how would someone know that if I don't intentionally tell them like, yo, um, they don't already know what it is you're going through. Or right. So I think that goes in hand in hand with that, you know, um, topic as far as being intentional with the things that you do, you want, you say, everything. It all goes together. Um, so I appreciate you even bringing that up just because it is um, it's vital to the way we get along. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people who aren't getting along because they haven't said what they felt prior to. They waited for it to blow up. And now we're sitting here like, well, damn, I didn't know you was feeling like that. And um, yeah, it, it's just, it's unfortunate. And I think it was something that we said, you said the other day, we was in Philly, um, we was having a conversation. And uh, it was like, if I bring up a concern, mm-hmm. And then you bring up one after the fact, like, but you didn't, like, this wasn't your initial issue mm-hmm. at, at that moment. And then you bring it up after. I forgot what you said or how you worded it, but I think it was really good. And I think that people need to take heed to that because if you, if we and you got to, if you have an issue with me, but you don't bring it up and then I have an issue and I bring it up right away. Mm-hmm. But then in your response to what I'm saying, the issue is you bring up, yeah, well, remember when you did it? It's like, wait, I thought we was talking about what you just did to me mm-hmm. or what you just made me feel. Yeah. So when you do that, it kind of takes away from what it is. Because now we're just chasing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Each a other. blame game or right, right. back and forth. And it gets, to me, I think it takes the focus off of the initial, the initial issue right. at hand. Like, yeah, it... I mean, I guess the those lines can get blurred a little bit depending on when something happened. But I always say like you gotta have you have to bite that. Like if if something happened and I choose to sit on it, and then when you bring up an issue to me, it's not the time for me to say, okay, well since you want to be bringing stuff up, let me hit you with this. Like that's not, you know, that's not healthy 
that's not a healthy form of communication, in my opinion. I think that you got to bite it. You got to wait. Bring it up at a different time. So that way you can really hone in on what the other person is saying so you can focus on, you know, a solution, if any. Right. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, it is unfortunate because we've done it. We've mm-hmm. done it. Um, um, I don't know who you would say did it more, though. Who do you think I did it more or you did it more? No, I, I think that over the whole course of our relationship, I want it because I'm trying to think of like yeah, who uh, actually brought because uh, that would speak to who's coming and bringing up an issue. I don't think you really brought a lot of stuff to me, which I guess that goes to like how you say you think you perfect and all of that. And I'd be right. like, well, well, you do, but I don't No, I don't. But I would say to my response to you would be like, I don't think I'm perfect, but if you don't ever bring me anything that I'm doing wrong or you don't ever tell me well, that you okay. got an issue with anything, then right. I guess I'm doing everything right. Right. So it would be more so me trying to have these little sit downs or times when I'm like, well, I don't like X, Y and Z. So, you know, I don't want to say I guess it was you coming at me more like, well, you. But I think that that was the dynamic earlier right. on, like. Because you would sit on a lot of stuff and be like, it's not a big deal. That's why I didn't bring it to you. But then, you know, yeah. if I speak up on something, it's like, well, you do this, too. And I'm like, well, you never told me. So Yeah, absolutely right. So I, I, so I, that's why, I'm, you know, you, you're better <laughs> when it comes to the memory. Um, so I would 100% agree with that because, you know, you were, you know, like, oh, we need to talk. And, you know, every man hates that. No one wants to hear, <laughs> oh, we need to talk. But, um, you know, it would be like, you did this and you didn't do that. And I want you to do this. And why can't we do that? And I'm like. Yo, do you realize you just did this? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, I, I don't understand what you're complaining about. This is just who I am. And it's <laughs> like, you kind of have to, like you said, like, put that to the side. You yeah. do. And it, it is a, a a big pill to swallow, essentially, because you like, you sitting here complaining about everything that you do. This is like, you do these exact same things to me. But um, it just helped us move along the way for to understand like, all right, this is not my turn, essentially. That's what it is. Like, it's not my turn to get out this stuff because if I didn't choose that moment when it was present, then you can't bring it up when someone's coming at you at that point because, it, it, like you said, it's just an argument at that point. Now it's just back and forth. No one's hearing um, anything that the other person is saying. So it's like, it's pointless. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because, or I'm glad you was able to recall how that was because I can t- hold myself accountable for it the things that, you know, I wasn't so great at in the beginning of this relationship mm-hmm. and coming from where I came from, it was more of, a, um, excuse me, like just yelling um, and just at the end of the day, like once you calm down, it's like, oh, well, you know, whatever. I guess I was wrong. Mm-hmm. And then you move on. Um, but yeah, I like I like the fact that, you know, I'm held accountable for the things that I've done because then it helps you move on. Yeah. Like in a positive way, not just, you know, more something like, eh, whatever, I ain't do shit. <laughs> I mean, like, that's on her. She feel that way. Like, she got to deal with it because the shit that she talking about is the shit she does to me. But, you know. No, not all the time. Right, not all the time, but it was. It was some of the shit like you, you're complaining about the shit you do. You know what I mean? Uh, well, I want to explore that later. But I mean, we can, but I'm just know. saying you did. that's the case. You don't have to believe it. I'm just telling you that it was. But, um... You know, I'm going to let you, you know, bring in your next topic um, so that you can um, share, you know, how you feel like we should be proceeding with this next thing, too. Um, so another thing as it relates to communication, I think is important is encouragement. Mm, um, I like that. So, yeah, like I thought about it and was like, you know, you see a lot of encouraging on social media and stuff like that. But, and the reason why I thought about encouragement in a different way or just in certain ways is because like, you know, just having a baby and having a new experience with the delivery as far as having a C-section, um, it brought about a lot of different feelings, you know, with the breastfeeding, you know, I breastfed Mace, but mm-hmm. the success that I'm having now with breastfeeding is, is different compared to um, the challenges I've had breastfeeding with Mace. Um, and while at this point I was still breastfeeding, my milk, st- you know, started to slow down. I was trying to fight to keep it up. Um, 
so like right now, me, you know, and my friends and family members, I try to be intentional about encouragement. Like if I know that somebody is going through something, if I know that somebody is um, working through something and, you know, in a good way, maybe they're in school, um, maybe they applying for a different job or having a career change. Like I try to make sure that whatever, whenever I am aware of something that's going on in somebody's life, that I keep my position and I always encourage them in any way that I can. I think encouragement goes a long way. You never know. Um, how somebody might be dealing with something, whether good or bad, how anxious they might be, how nervous they might be, um, or how, however they're feeling. And being an encourager, I think, can make a big difference in you know somebody's mood or how they can go about their next move when handling something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I 100% agree. Um, I think I am working on that. Um, I feel like I only felt like I needed to do that for my children Mm -hmm. and certain formats. You know what I mean? Like I felt like they needed that level of attention to encourage, not thinking that even I at times need to be encouraged Mm -hmm. to, to want to do something to when you, especially when you don't feel like doing something, you know what I mean? Like if, uh, I don't know, let's say for instance, like the dishes or whatever, like even though that's not a problem <laughs> for me, but I'm just saying like the dishes, um, if you get like a, you know, thank you, thank you for doing that. You know what I mean? Like I appreciate that, you know, if I wasn't this or if I wasn't doing this, I would have did it, but I appreciate you taking the time to do that. And as we know, you know, adults I'm referring to, when you go to do something, you'd be like, oh, it's probably going to take 10 minutes or something like that. you be in the kitchen <laughs> for like an hour two hours cleaning up stuff and we have a dishwasher this is the weirdest thing like you know i'll get to the point where i'm like i don't even want to put this in the dishwasher now i'm washing it and you do. yeah yeah and now and i you wasn't like that previously i just like just throw everything in there where today i'm like no i'm not gonna put that in there i'll just wash it i'll put that in and then yeah. clean off the stove and for people who have an electric stove you already know any little thing any speck that gets on it <laughs> it just like burns if you try to use it the next time it's just like the worst thing ever um, so it's like, you know, little things like that, that you go into doing and while you think it's going to take you 10 minutes, you'll be in there for, like I said, like an hour. Mm-hmm. But when you get that level of encouragement, like, you know, thank you for doing that. You know, um, I appreciate it. And I'm one now today. I think, I don't know what it is about me getting older. I think I'm just extra. Like, I don't like going into the kitchen and trying to cook with stuff everywhere. So it's like, mm-hmm. if, even if you're about to cook, I'll go in there and be like, all right, let me, let me get this together. Right, let me get, let me move this. Let me get this out the way. Let me clean this, mm-hmm. clean that. And it's just like. You know, you have said, like, it don't have to happen every time, but you have said, like, thank you. I appreciate it because it clears it out for you. Just like you can easily grab stuff. It's just, I don't know, something about that free in space mm-hmm. that allows you to just think clear right. when you're doing that. So, um, you know, just little things like that, like you said, encouraging um, the person to do it, to do something like that, where otherwise, you know, it goes unnoticed and unheard. Like, yeah. I don't think you ever thank me for taking out the trash, though. I don't think so. Thank you for taking up the trash. Yeah, because you don't have to. You've never touched the trash since you've been here. Like, never, I don't think. I feel like I have. Unless you, I mean, if you want to distinguish between trash and. Like taking it out for trash, yeah, like to the curb. That don't include recycling. I mean, is it trash? It is. No, it's recycled. It's going back and it's going. Recycled trash. It's trash to us. I mean, you you never know. Maybe you got it back. You don't know. This might be a bottle that you used previously. Recycling. That's not the point. I'm just saying, like, is the point is encouragement. So, and I'm not saying that I need it. I'm just saying like that's one of those things that it's a thinkless job essentially. Nobody cares. Take like out the trash? for for the woman, most women don't take out trash unless they live by themselves. They definitely prefer not to touch the trash at all. Yeah. Same way you prefer not to touch the bathrooms. Like you just like uh, you got it. You know what I mean? It's a thinkless it's not, job. It's not that I, I don't. It's not the bathroom, like, as a whole. It's the toilets. Okay. And I think that sharing a toilet, I, like, if I'm the only one that's using the toilet. <laughs> what? If I'm the only one that's using the toilet, I don't know. It's just, it's something about toilets that, I mean, I'll obviously, the bathroom got to be clean, so I'll clean it if I have to, but... If you prefer to take over the bathroom. Prefer. No one prefers to do it. That's the point. That's what I'm saying. Like encouragement, it goes, you know, in all different ways. And I, I'm saying I'm not trying to, you know, 
you know, make you seem like, you know, whatever, you don't do this or you don't do that. Because you have taken out the trash before, you know, at the previous home, but you just, here it's just like. I have not. Yeah. I stick to cleaning out the refrigerator, throwing things in the trash from the refrigerator. Right. That's my contribution to adding to the trash. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Add to the trash. Take yes. this out while you at it. But um, yeah, I, I think I'm working on encouragement um, throughout my friendships, relationships with people. Um, I didn't realize how important that it can be. Mm-hmm. For people to hear, like, yo, good job, man. Like, you know what I mean? Keep it up. You know, keep that going. You know, and to motivate that person. Mm-hmm. To, you know, to want to do something, even when they don't feel like it. And that's, the, I think, the biggest point. It's easy for somebody to get up and do something that they want to do. But right. when you really don't want to do it mm-hmm. and you get that little bit of encouragement, it motivates you to want to go ahead and do it. Right. And look, look, here we go. See, this is why we can't do it. Like, we have a, yeah. this young one here. Um, he's, he runs Delaware. a... Yeah, he runs our life. Hey, can you keep him for a few hours while we do so and so? Yeah, yeah, he runs our life. Um, And the sad part is, we got rid of one child, but then he won't go to sleep anymore. So it's like (sighs) he just been up. But when we was at her mother's house, he would sleep for hours, hours, hours. Would not wake up. Yeah, he was not. He just wouldn't do it. But now when we home, he's like, I'm in my comfortability. I'm gonna give y'all hell. But um, (laughs) yeah, encouragement is a big thing, people. I think, you know, if you have anybody out there. And sometimes you got to put your pride aside. Sometimes you have to put your pride aside in order to do that because a lot of times you're like, well, that's what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to do this. But sometimes we need that. Oh, man. Okay. There we go. But sometimes we really need that to, you know, keep trucking along. It's, it's, It's hard, man. It's really hard out here to navigate this thing we call life and... I appreciate my partner in in this in this life. So, you know, I, I try to encourage her. I remember there's been times where she just recently got her masters, and there's times I don't want to do this shit. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm not into this school shit. All of this, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't know what I was thinking. I, I did mine. I'm I'm cool, but she was able to finish up, and while being pregnant and sick. So Ugh. yeah, yeah, they're, they're, like you know, um. yeah, yeah, because just sickness is different from most people. People get. Um, Oh, uh, well, I don't know. We might have to cut it short again. I don't know, people. He not cooperating. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's just really tough. And I know you had one last one. I don't know if we were able to squeeze this in or not. Um, but it, I believe it was, like, being honest in communication. Be, um, mm-hmm. It was honesty in communication and um, it was something else, though, before that. It was? It was. So you said you was going to remember. You had your, your notes all written down in your head. Now you can't remember. Uh huh. What we say? Intentionality, encouragement. Yes. Honest communication. It was something else. Um, well, I mean, honest communication is just important too. Right. And I, I mean, because you can communicate and lie. You can. You know what I mean? You could be telling a lie that, that, I know. Timing. Timing? Timing. Of communication. Mm -hmm. Timing and communication? Yeah, like. Go ahead. Yeah. And I want to say maybe we kind of touched on it a little bit when we was talking about um, when you were saying that it's not always the time like to bring up something Mm -hmm. when somebody else brings an issue to you. Um, That goes into it as a part of it just a little bit, but. Timing, it also, like, I like to just talk about things and speak off of examples. Mm -hmm. Um, This baby won't let me live. (laughs) Um, But more so, like, when it comes to where, I guess, you are and who's around you when it comes to communicating with, you know, whoever it is, your friend, your family member, your spouse, more importantly, I think that, you know, some people, when they feel in something or they want to say something, they feel like, I got to get it out. I got to say it right now. Mm-hmm. And it's just not always the time and the place. Timing is everything. If we had a family function and, you know, I'm annoyed or you did something that I didn't like, I'm not going to snap on you right then and there. Yeah. That's not a healthy form of communication. Although it is communicating if I choose to say something, we're around all these people. It's not... 
the best, you know what I mean? It's not Setting, the best right. way to communicate it. Um, the same way if, you know, something do happen right then and there and we in front of a bunch of people, you know, somebody has to be mature enough to be like, not now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to, especially when you marry, you don't want to get into an argument. You don't want to embarrass yourself in a, yeah. exactly and embarrass potentially embarrass the other person or yourself Self, right so i feel like timing is everything when you decide to talk to somebody where you decide to talk to somebody at and who's around um and also just depend on your heart timing is everything when it comes to how you know how your heart is in the in the moment like sometimes you got to bring yourself to a level where you know the way you communicate is going to be in a loving way in a respectful way and mm -hmm. when you're on 10 it might not be the time like right. you might have to step away and say you know what later or another time so i think that that's a big piece of you know sometimes you hear something and depending on when you hear it you take it very differently where when you when the other person is even on 10 and you decide to say something the mode of defense is like, you know, what? Like, you you can't really receive what the other person is saying as opposed to when you calm down and when your head is clear, then you can receive it. You say the same thing and you like, I just, I couldn't hear that earlier. I wasn't in a space to hear that earlier. Right. But now that I'm, you know, I'm calming down and I'm listening to you, it makes perfect sense or whatever. I just think that that is at the top of the list with intentionality, timing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think these all kind of go hand in hand. They yeah. all kind of flow into one another. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and what was the last one? Honest communication. Honest communication. And that's a no-brainer most times. It's like... Right. And it, it is, I think sometimes... So a lot of what we're saying is, is no-brainers. Yeah. It's just that it needs to be said because everyday life kind of like doesn't allow you to sit down and focus on the small things mm -hmm. and these are like what I consider small things but need to be said out loud so that you can kind of remind yourself every once in a while you have something to go oh yeah damn I should be doing this or I should be doing that and I know we spoke about this before when we was on the radio station um, even going back to being intentional like when we decided to um, take each other on dates it was very intentional Yes, and the the communication was there like, hey, this is my month to take you out. Excuse me. Um, I'm taking you here. Well, that was more so you like in me. I think he was like, I'm taking you here. Whereas though, I kind of made it a little bit more of a mystery. Like, mm -hmm. I'm taking you somewhere. Just be ready. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we out. Um, yeah. Dates. Like, the actual date of the month. Right. Right. Yeah, it had to sure be. He was intentional about communicating that. Like, make sure. Right. There's nothing going on. Don't ask. Don't tell nobody you can't go here. You can't right. do this because you're going to be away. Mm -hmm. And um, I think people, it just needs to be said because people go on dates. They do. They really just be like, mm -hmm. and maybe they don't call it. They be like, oh, let's just go get something to eat real quick. Yeah. But when you sit there, you're talking, you're communicating and everything like that. It, it's still a date. Essentially, it just wasn't planned out mm -hmm. with thought behind it. And a lot of times both parties, I don't want to make it seem like it's just women, but I think women more so need to know, like, I'm being thought about. Mm -hmm. I'm being, like, pursued in a way that like, makes them feel like, I, like you know what I mean? You think about me when I'm yeah. not there or or there was some thought I'm put into this. Like, you can easily go out and buy somebody a bag mm -hmm. that's expensive or shoes that's expensive or anything that's of value to what the masses would see. But when you take the time out to buy or do something, I'm going to say, that's intentional mm -hmm. that sometimes don't even require money. It just be like, you know, you, you thought enough about me to go and do this mm -hmm. and let you know that you're thinking about the person. So it's sometimes we just need to like slow down. And I know within this, these last two years, we've been able to slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think things are picking back up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where the world is back, you know, because before I remember when, you know, the pandemic first started, everything would just kind of seem like at a halt. Like even outside air smelled different to me. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It was like mm -hmm. not that many cars on the road. Like we had, yeah. unfortunately, you know, had a tragedy in the family around that time. So we had to be outside. Mm -hmm. But I remember like riding down the boulevard, I was like, damn, there's nobody out here. Like, you know what I mean? Remember we was just like riding the West Philly, like, mm -hmm. holy shit. Like I've never got here this fast. There's not like maybe two or three cars out here. Right. Um, it felt like like a holiday type of thing. Yeah, you know, how you go mm -hmm. outside on like a Christmas, and <laughs> most people cold, already yeah, everybody kind of like settled in. Yeah, 
So, you know, again, a lot of these things are very much intentional. I mean, um, needs to be said intentionally mm -hmm. because our everyday lives can easily put us in so many different directions that you forget about the small things that you know, that need to be done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To maintain healthy relationships and not just romantically, you know, all levels of uh, friendships and, and cousins, brothers, aunts, mothers, like everybody, mm -hmm. you need to be able to communicate that. And so. you know what too, like the, another thing that just goes into intentionality, like mm -hmm. not necessarily something specific, but just about communication period. Like, a lot of times, you know, you have kids, you have jobs, um, you have obligations throughout the day that doesn't necessarily include, um, you know, your friends or your spouse mm -hmm. and or your family members. But sometimes, you know, it's it goes a long way to just ask a person and just say, hey, like, you know, I just want to talk. Mm -hmm. um, and my thought process behind this obviously comes from, you know, a point of view of a spouse like, you know, let's just sit down. Like, we talk a lot. And I think that um, now with us, you know, being in a house together more often over the last two years, working from home, um, getting the opportunity to talk way more often, um, it just helps you understand how important it is to make that time. For those who don't have the option to, you know, sit at home with their spouse and, mm -hmm. you know, work in the same space or right. yeah, be with sure. them a lot more times throughout the day, it's important to just sometimes be like, you know, when you get a minute, say, hey, even if it's early in the morning, you got to wake up a little bit more earlier before you get ready to leave and go to work or school or whatever. Or, um, you know, take it down or put the kids down a little earlier just to give yourself that time to say, hey, like, you know, let's talk yeah, yeah, yeah. about whatever. And you just never know where the conversation may lead. But I sometimes think good, sometimes bad because it's, right, it's, right? it's not sometimes. always good. But I think but it'd be that healthy. it's healthy. Right. I think that getting it out there, giving each other the floor to be like say you know say what it is because sometimes that alone speaks to people decide and say you know i'm not even gonna say nothing like i don't got the time right so yeah and um i know people look at you like um an unofficial therapist <laughs> and um they come to you for a lot you know what i mean so i know a lot of times even while we're home our time does only come at night you know what i mean mm -hmm. because Everybody neither went to bed or they didn't like, all right, I didn't got everything I need out. <laughs> and then it's like, all right, it's your time now. You know what I mean? And I may be doing whatever it is that I'm doing. And it's still like we take those times out to recap, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like, let me tell you what, what went on today and yeah. this, this, that, and forth. Because a lot of times, even though you're working from home, it doesn't mean that we spend every single second within each other's space. Because mm -hmm. if you're working and I'm working and you got kids to tend to, and this is like, it's a lot that right. goes on throughout those days. True. Um, that can easily get lost. So you have to still be intentional about putting the kids down early, which mm -hmm. we've done in the past yep. or try to, at least with, you know, this new one, he's, he's different. He's not, um, on his own schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Like as you, you heard him earlier and now he's sleep now. So, but, um, yeah, I, I like that's that's a good point because a lot of times if you're out of the house eight, ten hours out of your day, because if you gotta commute, then you gotta do, excuse mm -hmm. me, eight hours of a shift, you know, you're out of the house about ten hours. So then by the time you get home, you beat, you eat, you know. Right. Got kids to put down, especially if it's homework or anything. School, right, homework, stuff like it's that. It's all kinds of stuff that you have to um yeah. communicate. You know what I mean? Honestly and intentionally mm -hmm. in order to, you know, alleviate some of that stress that can build up, which that's going to happen. But if you help out and, and, and learn how to alleviate it a lot sooner then you, you, you kind of get less of those blow ups mm -hmm. at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like, cause it's hard not to just not be like to live a life stress free. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Unless you, cause even, if, and I think as a kid or younger version of myself, like you got all the money in the world, what you stressed about, what, what, you know what I mean? Right. But there's other stressors <laughs> that come without finance, you know what I mean? Like there could be a, a shit ton of things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just think that um, everything that you said today was right on point in regards to how we should communicate as a whole. Um, again, like uh, we, we said it earlier, well, on a previous episode, you know, we have big families and it's hard, very, very hard to manage and navigate all the ins and outs of all those different personalities. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause 
you got two and three generations of family members that just don't agree on a lot of different things. They have their own point of view and you can't force no one to think like you or feel like you, but right. in a sense, you still want people to be able to come together in harmony and not have that um, awkwardness that goes along with a lot of stuff. And I, I pray that, you know, um, my family can get a little bit of a healing because we going through some things and, you know, as well as, 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 well, as, well, as well as yours, right. You know what I mean? Because, we can never go back to what we were because I think we're all grown and we all like have gone through different things in life yeah. that change you forever, essentially. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as a unit, we used to be, I think, a lot closer. And I'm hoping that, you know, some of our message gets to them and they and they hear it and and want to change and want to be better and want to to learn from mistakes and not like like harp on them and make them like what they stand on. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people will stand on that negative thought. Like I don't need you. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I, what, what do you do for my life type of thing? That's like, well, that's not the point. You know what I mean? Like that's mm -hmm. not the point at all. Like life is short. And yeah. if we want to, um, be better as a whole, then you start with the small things that you got going on and you work your way up. Yeah. And like I said today, I don't have a problem with anybody in my family. Um, at least I don't have a problem. I don't know if they have problems. I don't know. I can't speak for everybody, but I don't have a problem with anybody. I love my entire family. Everybody who knows me knows that if I ever did anything, it was always with my family. If I wanted to do something, I prefer to do it with my family. I don't care to be around a bunch of people that I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's just, you know, it's one of those things that you just want to see things get better and progress in a positive way and not people standing on those negative things that, um, that they're standing on essentially because that's what it is like you stand on the fact that i don't care if i ever speak to this person again i don't care if i ever see this person again. it's like well how, how how does that work you know what i mean like and i and it was actually something else that you said before um about at least getting it out there to that person the problem with yeah. that is in certain situations is that the yelling and arguing arguing happen and nobody really heard what the other said. They probably picked out one or two things that really hurt them. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're running with. And see, you know what? That's And a lot of people don't, you know, always agree. But I always, in the past anyway, offered or saw it beneficial, especially when you got a communication need between two people or people who are too much alike. As far as okay. their personalities, if somebody, you know, as far as like the stronger personalities where, you know, that it's an it's an issue that when it, you know, comes full circle, it's going to be some yelling, it's going to be some screaming, it's going to be some cursing or whatever. Sometimes, you know, it's beneficial to have a mediator, somebody mm. who is there, who has nothing to gain from picking sides or... Yeah. Um, somebody to be objective. Yeah, basically. somebody to be ob objective. Somebody who genuinely cares about, you know, the relationship between the two of y'all. I don't necessarily have to be somebody you know. I always say that, um, you know, for people who are opposed to therapy, um, official therapy, going to a professional, mm -hmm. um, it could be healthy to find somebody that you trust, somebody that you look up to, um, somebody who you look at to where like you know you may look at somebody like she's a good communicator and i'm trying to be that yeah you know what let me go talk to her or him or whoever the person may be because it's just so much that can be fixed or clarified through the proper ways of communication and i've been down that road with people who like i know how to get up here on 10 but i, I feel like not all the time. So I'm not going to say I've mastered. Mm -hmm. I think that um, I understand how to not lead a conversation with that attitude of being right. on 10 all the time, cursing, yelling. Um, sometimes I even need somebody to bring me back down, depending on the nature of the situation. But I realize that is is not it doesn't get anywhere when you're dealing with those kind of people who want to lead with anger, lead yeah. with their stronger personalities, like bring that down. Like that's yeah. not going to get us nowhere. If you constantly focused, if you're, if you're constantly focused on um, somebody being right or wrong, mm -hmm. 
Right. You know, like, and you, most times when you're the person who's feeling what you're feeling, you always want to prove the other person wrong. Right. It's like, a lot of times it's not about that. So I'm glad you brought that up. And I, I'm going to probably close out with this because I, I, I was guilty of one part of that mm-hmm. where I'm coming out of a situation where I felt like I was always the guy who was wrong. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it was like, because of that, my whole stance was I got to prove my point and it has to be right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And what some people don't understand is the, that point of view or that stance, I should say, is unhealthy. Right. Because you have your perspective and I have my perspective and two things can be true at the same time. Mm-hmm. And because you don't see it that way or the other person doesn't see it that way, it's like, well, how don't you understand this? And again, it can come across as very selfish, very narcissistic. Mm-hmm. And I, like I said, I was guilty of that because of a previous relationship and the way that I was villainized almost. Like it was like everything that happened, I felt like was like, it's your fault. So in return, you kind of go forward with saying, listen, I ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's you feeling that way. You need to work on that. You need to get that together. But I didn't do it. I ain't going to do that. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like not taking accountability for being in a relationship and that it takes two to argue. It takes two to have any type of dialogue. You know what I mean? Like there's so many things that go into that that you have to hold yourself accountable, accountable for and be transparent enough to understand that being vulnerable is not going to it's not going to kill you you know what i mean like yeah. or, or showing that side of you like damn i, I fucked up because a lot of times we know we'll, we'll we'll know we just don't want to admit it mm-hmm. so and you know, i thought that was good you know i hope people can learn from this and and take something from it and and you know just apply it because i know it's helped me i don't feel like i'm always at a nine and a half you know what i mean i used to feel like anything somebody do to me be like all it takes is one thing and i'm i'm, I'm just I'm going to explode on you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whereas today, it takes a lot more to get me to that point. And, um, you know, there's a lot of it's thanks to you. So I appreciate you for being in my life. Um, I hope that, you know, people out there, that they got somebody in their lives that, yeah. you know, can help them, you know what I mean, along their way in, in life because it's really, really hard out here, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. to stay positive in the midst of all the negative things that go on. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are just they winging it. Like, yeah, is <laughs> is really important that you have an immediate circle, and it don't have to be a lot of people, but just those stronger people in your life that you can trust and go to when it comes to matters of your relationships, family, friends, mm-hmm. um, ro- romantic relationships, people who are going to speak life and not death on those relationships because as people you know, we need love. And that's that's the bottom line. Mm-hmm. And I think, like you said, being vulnerable, a lot of people look at it as a weakness, and it's not. Um, it's actually a strength. Um, and the sooner I think that a lot of people look at vulnerability as a strength, I think that it could save a lot of relationships um, before it gets to a point of no return. But I think that looking at the importance of our relationships and not being so quick to write people the, off yes, yes. through misunderstanding or through, you know, because I see a lot of people let social media, and, and I know we talk about this all the time, like people say, oh, social media is fake. And we like, I mean, are you fake? I don't, really yeah, I don't, like, know, I don't agree unique. with that. <laughs> I'm a real person. <laughs> right. You know, I run my page. Mm-hmm. So that whole is social media thing, I put on here what I want people to see. And I'm like that. I, everybody puts on social media what they want people to see. Right. But you'll never get from me on social media and be and see me in person and be like, I feel like the person that's on social media is a totally different person from what I see in person. I don't I, I don't have to go on social media to portray myself as a different person and have fun. Like I I don't know. And maybe it's a it's an aspect of that that I'm missing or that I'm not in tune with when it comes to other people because I see it all the time. This social media shit ain't for real. Like, it's not? Are you for real? Are you? I don't understand. I don't go right. on there to play games. I don't go on there to repost stuff that I really don't agree with or repost right. stuff that I don't apply to my own life or I wouldn't encourage somebody else to apply to their own life. So 
Right. It they, don't make sense. It, it, it makes no sense. But a lot of people go to it for answers mm-hmm. or, you know, goals when it comes to right. their relationships. relationships or, yep. You know, so it's, I don't know. Yeah. And it is. It's unfortunate. So, um, you know, don't don't let people lie to you, people. <laughs> like, <laughs> they are, it's definitely real. It's just that that's an easy way out. It's a cop out. Yeah. Um, it allows you to use a crutch to say certain things. And like I said, you know, to get yourself out of certain situations because at the end of the day, these are real people's people in their lives. They show you what they want to show you, yes, but don't let them like make you think that it's not real. It is. It's very much real. There's some somebody or there's somebody that they know typing up what they think or feel and posting. So it's not, it's not fake. It's definitely a real thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, um, we appreciate your time as always. You know, like, subscribe, comment. Tune into the page. We are on every platform that you can think of. You can stream the audio. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on Spotify. A lot of people don't know that, but Spotify has video uh, podcasts too. So you can actually go on. Um, we are on there as well. But yeah, it's Unprivileged Drinkers. I'm all burping. I don't know what this <laughs> is, but this stuff has just like made me like completely like burpy today. <laughs> um, But yeah, um, we're going to do another one. We got something else in store. We're going to keep bringing them to y'all, but, you know, we just wanted to, like, follow up on this one because it was very, very much, like, needed. Yeah. It's therapeutic, I think, to even speak and talk, and I hope that this brings about a level of conversation in the households that, you know, people, you know, start to talk to one another. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, even if it's through text, you know what I mean? If that's the way you are right. better at communicating, then mm-hmm. do that. Start somewhere. Start somewhere, exactly. Like, let's not allow the toxicity of in, in the world to invade your home because when you do that, you just, it's just like you're dividing yourself. This is your family. That's a part of you. So you're dividing yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't allow it to happen. You know what I mean? Like we, I feel like we got too much division in this world as, as it is. You know what I mean? Like, so just love on your family and, you know, be intentional, yep. be honest, and communicate. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, you know, but before we go out, I got I got to say this. CWSpirits.com is where you can go get all your liquor from um, anything over one hundred and twenty five dollars um, is free shipping. If you use the code UMP five, you also get um, a percentage off. You know, the thing that we, we like to drink is the Sip and Shine. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a lot of different flavors. Well, a few different flavors. I think it's like five of them. They got like some holiday ones, too. Um, but the t- traditional ones is the Arnold Shiner, the Raspberry Shinade, and what is this? Shineberry Sweet Tea. Yes. So go visit cwspirits.com. Use the code UMP5 to support your, uh, your folks here, uh, privileged drinkers. Um, but yeah, we about to get out of here. Like I said, you'll hear from us again shortly. Appreciate your time. We're getting out of here. Thank you. Thank you. Static. Linked up with a couple exes just to make sure I'm protected Cause losing me is like wearing heavy chains as your necklace And I'm infinitely better, it's hard for them to accept it Than any nigga they had or any nigga that's next And come on, they fuck around and do some crazy shit Like try to lock me down forever on some baby shit So I just tell them I'll be back on some lazy shit They start asking questions, juking on some shady shit Come on, this the problem with being insane Trying to settle down early, won't have me in no chain Sitting court side, but I'm trying to be in the game There's something deep inside of me that's just not easily tamed Come on, and I be trying to calm it down But something by my spirit is attracted to the crown Don't want no wedding ring, so I be dumbfound To CC every girl that I'd CC round town But if I did, I'd tell them that I love them Don't want no situation, I just really want to fuck them And after I come through, I hit it crazy, then I tuck them I just might leave a hoodie or a shirt, cause that's my custom I'm telling you I'm a pro at this shit My stroke back and forth like we be rowing this shit I fill her head with lies but she be knowing this shit So when it's time for our goodbyes she start hoeing this shit Come on I'm all glowing this shit Dice in my hand now so I be rolling this shit And my bars like a river they be flowing this shit And her ass real fast so I be holding her shit Come on <laughs>